This is going to be the next part of taking notes in your Bible, and we're going to look at a topic again. Uh, I like to do a topic a week, a chapter a week, and a book of the Bible a week. That's what I like to do. That just keeps me very refreshed and uh, helps me to continuously learn something about the Bible. If I do a new topic, a new chapter, and a new book of the Bible every week with other little studies here and there, this helps you to consistently learn something. And in this one, we're going to look at God's judgment for sin on the cross. This is one of the judgments in the Bible. God's judgment for sin on the cross. You see, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, God poured out His wrath on the Lord Jesus Christ. He took God's judgment for sin. And you either accept the payment and you're not judged for your sins because they've already been judged on the cross, or you reject the payment and therefore have to be judged for all your sins. I mean, it's a good deal. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on Him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, and all your sins are just paid for. You accept the payment, all your sins are paid for, you don't have to be judged for them. Jesus already took the judgment. Okay, the first one we're going to see is Jesus Christ took our hell when he was on the cross. I don't believe that Jesus burned in hell. I believe that Jesus suffered hell when he was on the cross. Okay, the first one I want to show you is Matthew 27, 45. In Matthew 27, 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Jesus Christ experienced darkness on the cross. He was separated from the Father and experienced darkness on the cross, just like the lost man will experience outer darkness in the lake of fire, an eternal Hellfire. He's going to experience outer darkness. That's Matthew 27, 45. Next, Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Let's read those. It says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So this is saying, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he was going against unclean spirits, principalities, and powers, as it calls them in Ephesians 6 and here in Colossians 2.15. The devil and unclean spirits were taunting the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's in hell. Fallen angels and unclean spirits. That's what's in hell. That's what you'll see in hell. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus Christ experienced that on the cross. He experienced hearing the voices of the unclean spirits just like the lost people in hell are hearing the fallen angels, the unclean spirits. And pretty soon, the devil himself will be going to the bottomless pit and then eventually cast into the lake of fire. Next, John nineteen twenty eight. When Jesus was on the cross, it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he said, I thirst. What did the rich man in hell say? He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. No water in hell. Jesus said, I thirst, because he took your hell. The cross was God's judgment for sin. Next, Psalms 22, 6. It says, But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. That's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. It says, But I am a worm. And and Jesus said himself, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, sin is like a serpent. Jesus Christ became sin on the cross. He 
it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And what's in hell? In Mark 9.44, it says, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not in hell, which are the carcasses of the men. Their worm dieth not. As it says in Isaiah 66, it says, they shall look upon the carcasses that have trans." that have transgressed against me. I'm paraphrasing here. It says, Their worm shall not die, and their fire shall not be quenched. So that's what's, what hell is going to be like. And Jesus Christ took our hell on the cross. So that's Matthew 27, 45, Colossians 2, 14 through 15, John 19, 28, Psalms 22, 6. And that's just a few. That's just a little sneak peek there. You can add more later. Jesus Christ took our hell. So if Jesus Christ took your hell, if Jesus already suffered hell for you on the cross, then why would you think that you could lose your salvation and suffer hell? Are you going to pay for the sins of your life two times? Jesus already suffered for them once. Are you going to suffer for them a second time? That would make your sin being punished two times. You don't pay for the same crime twice. You've heard of the double jeopardy stuff. You don't pay for the same thing twice. Someone asked, will a certain sin send me to hell after I'm saved? If you're saved, Jesus already took your hell on the cross. And nothing can change that. Okay, Jesus took our sin. That's the next one. He took our sin. If Jesus took your sins, then why would you ever have to pay for your sin? Jesus died for sins past present, and future. He died for sins you hadn't even committed yet. If Jesus Christ paid for your sin, then why would you have to pay for it again? The payment only needed to be made once. Hebrews 7.27. Look at Hebrews 7.27. It says, Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Jesus Christ didn't have to offer a sacrifice for his own sins because he's sinless. And then he only had to offer himself once. Just once. The payment only needed to be made once. Now, Isaiah 59, 2. It says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, that's the problem. Your sin is what separated you from God. Jesus Christ paid for your sins on the cross. He reconciles you back to God. You become a friend to God when you get saved. God's judgment for sin was on the cross. Will you accept the payment? And then you don't have to be judged for your sin because all the judgment is put on Jesus Christ. John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. That's the penalty for rejecting the payment. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will die in your sins and you'll go to hell. Now 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the best verse for this. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ was made sin for us, and he knew no sin. All right, now, Isaiah 53. The, probably the greatest chapter on the Jesus dying on the cross in the Old Testament. Now, Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs, borne like carried. He bare our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. You see how God's judgment for sin is on the cross. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God took every single thing sinful that you ever did and dumped it on top of Jesus Christ when he was on the cross. He became sin for us who knew no sin. 
He did that for you. He paid the payment for sin. The wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his... His generation, for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He was stricken for their transgression. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross, to appease the wrath of God. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He took all your sin. He took all the sin of everybody in the world, even the ones who are going to reject the payment. The only difference between you and a lost person is you accepted the payment that Jesus Christ paid on the cross and they rejected the payment. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Plainly showing you God's judgment for sin was on the cross. All your sin was put on Jesus on the cross. So if you will believe on Him to be your crucified, bed, and risen Savior, you don't have to pay for your sin. Jesus already paid for it. Jesus took your sin. He took your hell. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes... Ye were healed. First John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So you see how Jesus Christ took your sin. So he took your hell, he took your sin, and he took God's wrath. That's the next thing. Jesus took our wrath, so we no longer have the wrath of God on us. In John 3.36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you're lost, if you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God presently abides on you because you haven't accepted the payment that Jesus paid on the cross. You see, when Jesus was on the cross, God took the cup of wrath, poured all of it out on Jesus Christ, he took our wrath. And since I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God is, not, is no longer on me. It was put on Jesus Christ. But since you haven't believed on Jesus Christ, the wrath of God still abides on you. But all you have to do to get the wrath of God off from you is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now Mark fifteen thirty four, And at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he was separated from the Father. That's why he said, Why hast thou forsaken me? And that's what the lost man will say in hell. God has forsaken him. And you don't want to end up in that position. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus Christ delivered you from the wrath to come. He took the wrath of God on sin. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 and 10, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, 
but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with Him. So Jesus Christ took our hell, He took our sin, and He took God's wrath. And why is it that Jesus was the perfect person to do these things? And that's because Jesus is the sinless Savior. Jesus himself said in John eight forty six, Which of you convinceth me of sin? In Matthew 27, 4, it says, uh, Judas said, I have sinned and that I have betray betrayed the innocent blood. So Judas, the wickedest man, probably one of the wickedest, wickedest men of all time, said that Jesus had innocent blood. He betrayed the innocent blood, and it was God's blood, Acts 20, 28. Matthew 27, 24, Pilate. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Pilate himself said Jesus was a just person. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Jesus knew no sin. Jesus, the sinless Savior, is the only person who could take your hell, take your sin, and take God's wrath because He is God manifest in the flesh. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God, God to sin. 1 Peter 2.22 says He did no sin. Neither was God found in his mouth. He knew no sin. He did no sin. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus Christ knew no sin, did no sin, was without sin. Hebrews 7.27, Who needeth not daily, as those high priests offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, and then for the peoples, for this he did once when he offered up himself. He didn't have to offer a sacrifice first for his own sins because he did no sin. So Jesus took your hell, he took your sin, he took God's wrath, and he was able to do these things because Jesus is the sinless Savior. And this is God's judgment for sin on the cross. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are paid for. You don't have to be judged for the sins because they were already judged on Calvary. If you're going to reject the payment, then your sins won't be, be judged that, like that, like a saved person's. You're going to pay for your sins. You're going to be judged for your sins. You're going to die in your sin you're going to go to hell. And you're going to go to the great white throne judgment instead of the judgment seat of Christ. You'll be left when the rapture happens. You'll be left behind. And then you'll be tossed into the lake of fire at the great white throne judgment one of these days. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Paul gave us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The gospel is this, Jesus died. He died for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. And if you will believe on him today as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you can be saved and have eternal life. Don't turn away God's payment for sin on the cross because you're going to end up being judged for your own sins if you do.